Hello everybody. Hi everyone. Hi, my name is Eric and I'm Michiel or Mike as we yeah, say in English easier. <laughs> much more easier. So it's Mike today. Uh, so we're going to talk about something very exciting. We're going to talk about a new NVIDIA RTX VGA series. So Where everyone has been waiting for for yeah, ages. Yeah, yeah, we as well, right? I mean, uh, this is already, they, they told it us took a while. It took 10 a while. years <laughs> in the making. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so what are we going to do today? Uh, small recap, because not everybody saw the live stream from NVIDIA. So a small recap about the event, what the new RTX uh, VGA series is all about. Uh, then a trip down memory lane. I have here a lot of old VGA cards with red PCB, you know. I'm, I'm, Nostalgic. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you the, the Twin Frozer <laughs> story. Um, and then uh, we're going to call uh, via Skype with Peter. Uh, I think you all know Peter from previous live streams. He is now in Taiwan uh, working with our HQ team, with our R&D team on the new VGA cards, the new RTX VGA cards. I'm still a little bit, you know, what can I say and what can I not say, you know, because we're already working a long time on this and now... So don't ask too complicated questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you know. So we really have to think. There are still some <laughs> NDAs, so we cannot talk about performance today. Um, you, I know a lot of, a lot of you. You know, you, you want to see benchmarks online, and you want to know what the performance is in games, in your favorite game. I just say we don't know, so we cannot talk about it. Um, so and yeah, at the end we still have some nice uh, new VJ cards from us, which will actually they're all new, but which we didn't announce yet so sneak peek uh, yeah let's let's uh, get started uh, so i prepared some slides about the event uh, did you see green i saw green everywhere yeah it was just open any web page and it's green all over the place yeah they did a very good campaign uh, nvidia everything was green and yeah facebook twitter twitch everything yeah it was you know it was very clear they they uh, were going to announce a new new uh, vj card everybody knew a lot of things already uh, leaked on the internet and this was it the new RTX series and RTX ray tracing, right? It's all about uh, uh, ray tracing. So, um, yeah, uh, a new GPU, uh, new core, a new GPU core, uh, mm -hmm. Turing. Uh, yeah, when I hear this Turing name, like a like year or half year ago, you know, it was like about uh, mining. They said special CPU or GPU, sorry, for mining. I was like, huh? Strange, but in the end, you know, they have so many code words. But back then, mining was Hot. really booming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, so indeed. everything was related to mining. Yeah. So this is maybe an un unclear screenshot. I'm not going into too uh, much technical detail. Uh, you know, you can find a lot of websites who write about this. But basically, besides the shader units, which NVIDIA always has, uh, they also have dedicated uh, silicon, or let's say dedicated transistors, a part of the GPU for ray tracing. And the tensor cores are there. The tensor cores are for AI. And you already could find them in the very expensive, uh, well, not expensive, you know, but the, the Quadro cards. Yeah, but they also want to use the tensor cores for games as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're in the uh, G of RTX, I should say, GPU. So uh, they want to use it to improve the, uh, the image quality. So yeah. maybe let's have a look at, at some uh, movie. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to show you the whole movie. Uh, you can find this. Let me see if this uh, starts. Yeah. So this this NVIDIA already showed a long time ago. Uh, it was. Uh, this is actually first shown with uh, the unleash of the new Quadro card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which was the rig of 10,000 uh, US dollar. Yeah, it was uh, an insanely expensive system yeah. to to run. And it didn't have on. even 60 FPS, right? This is not real time. No, no, no. It's not 60 FPS. Yeah. And but I think they used four of those Quadro cards yeah, to, to just render this. Yeah. So, but you can already see the the, the graphic detail. You know, it's all about light ray tracing it's it's not about uh, you know it's about multiple light yeah. sources which bounce off details uh, of, of surfaces and all the details so uh, how it shatters in the room and this is very intensive uh, to calculate this and, and to be honest Nvidia now they don't have 100 true real time ray tracing it's more like a hybrid solution so they use the shaders and on top of that they do ray tracing and they have a lot of uh, smart technology for that. This is another movie. Uh, let me see. Yeah, like this, I guess. Yeah, so this is uh, called uh, Project uh, Soul, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, also amazing. This is a, I think they put one week ago on the internet. Uh, to be honest, I don't know any details uh, how they rendered it, if it's real time, etc. But what uh, Nvidia really tries to do with the ray tracing, they, they try to to get close to a cinematic experience so 
pretty much what you see in a movie or something. They're trying to get games to the to the same level of graphic quality. Yeah. So so it's hard to define if it's it's real or not. Yeah, indeed. Sometimes, like yeah. the reflections on the helmet, it's almost but like we are gamers. There. So you know these tech dem demos are always cool, and and uh, this is also what Nvidia did in the past with with the, the Dawn. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, so really nice, uh, uh, yeah, tech demos. Uh, but you know this is no game. Maybe it will become the uh, game one day. Um, and there is a difference between a single graphics card and four very expensive, very yeah, powerful quadro indeed, cards. Indeed. So I was really happy to see this. You know, some uh, real games, uh, some real game engines, and actually yeah. I think already. In April or March, Microsoft already announced uh, the um, DirectX ray tracing yeah, the, software. Yeah, the DXR API that yeah. announced it. Yeah, so you know, this is already in the making, and uh, uh, we know uh, Unity, they are, they are going to make their game engine compatible. Uh, DICE, uh, at least with Battlefield, but for sure you will yeah, see some more titles. Yeah. Frostbite, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, Unreal. Uh, engine which uh, is used for many games also yeah. i heard they are going to uh already existing titles they will make them compatible with ray tracing so okay. for example player unknowns battlegrounds really popular game and they also want to wow. add ray tracing to those i existing think they games. first need to fix some, some other performance issues that's another discussion <laughs> But yeah. they're, they're kind of known for adding new things before fixing old yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so now, um, uh, so this is all uh, very excited, and uh, you know, probably, of, probably, you know, for sure, these games you can still play on on the old shaders, you know, like DirectX 12, DirectX 11, without ray tracing, uh, no problem at all. Uh, but ray tracing will just make your game look more nice, and it will depend on the game. Yeah. I think we have a, a, a short demo of. Uh, uh, Tomb Raider, uh, the new one, which will launch, I think soon, a few months now, right? A few weeks, and maybe. A few weeks, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, th yeah, I think uh, middle of September somewhere, huh? 14th or something. Um, I mean, this game is made for it. It's also called uh, Shadow Shadows. of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, so... Uh, and it's all in the name. You can really see it with the different lighting angles, really how the shadows, how they drop. It's yeah, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, watch the movie later on the internet. Uh, uh, something else, sorry, I still I need to watch over there. So it's memory. Finally, GDR6. I mean, this a big was step. A, a really yeah, big step. A big step. We've uh, been at GDR5 for a long, long time. Uh, yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. So, uh, so we're already a little bit happy when they came with GDR5X. Absolutely. But now, finally. Real GDDR6 yeah. memory. So um, if you have any questions, you drop them in the chat. I see a lot of chatter going on because we're uh, following Mixer, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and um, Twitch. Uh, Twitch indeed. So a lot yeah. of chatter. Uh, so if you any question, you know, just uh, we'll try to catch it. We will try to answer it. Uh, so about memory performance, we, we got a lot of questions. Why not HBM2? But HBM2 is very expensive. It's also very fast, but it's also very expensive. And you know, it, it's not uh, there is not not a volume in the market. So and uh, at this moment, GDR6 is also expensive because if you look, if you compare the, the launch of uh, uh, the the 10 series in, in 2016, uh, I think there was a May time frame somewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, it all came with uh, DDR5, DDR5X, but that's mo since that moment, price already doubled for memory. You can see it everywhere in all the memory prices. Yeah. Uh, SSDs, DDR4 uh, RAM. It got yeah. now SSDs are getting a bit better in price, indeed, but indeed. DDR4 has been yeah. still quite horrible. So, so and memory, you know, is now very expensive, but also GDR6, you know, it's uh, the the price of that is very expensive, and that yeah. will also reflect in the price of the the GPUs or the VGA cards. Uh, but at least we have a lot of bandwidth, and that's important, you know, for better performance. Like what I said already. We don't know the performance. Uh, what we have is uh, let me uh, this slide from Nvidia. Huge leap in performance, and they have a new way of calculating performance uh, called the uh, the RTX Ops. Yeah, it's, it all has yeah. to do with ray tracing. And for sure, I mean, for sure, we believe that that for ray tracing, these cars will have way much better performance than the old ones because they have dedicated silicon in them. But we don't know what this means for the real DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 performance. So yeah, that's still to be seen because the RTX Ops is really the combination between the, the new RT cores, the ray tracing and the Tensor cores. Yeah, I see a question. So will we release Lightning? Well, we will talk later about our models. Uh, who knows? Yep. Uh, I mean, TI, uh, normally we release uh, Lightning on the most high-end SKU, so TI uh, makes sense because now this one is uh, one step above. 
Um, let me see about uh, questions about pricing. Yeah, I mean, everyone's uh, talking about the prices. The, yeah, so there also <laughs> uh, we see questions coming yeah. about uh, what about uh, the performance? When can we see benchmarks? Um, you, you need to understand uh, at this moment, uh, let's say uh, last Monday, uh, Nvidia announced its uh, new GPU, the RTX series. Mm -hmm. uh, at that moment, you know, they, they uh, have all the editors from worldwide there. Uh, at today, I think, yeah, today they have a, a editor's day, which means that the, all those editors are getting a technical briefing, you know, about how the GPU works, how yeah. those tensor cores works, how everything works together. So all quite, the background information, yeah, quite technical. Yeah. Uh, from that moment on, they, they start to uh, hand out uh, GPUs. Actually, some editors already have GPUs. Uh, at one moment, they will get the drivers because I think not everybody will get the drivers at the same time. And then, of course, the media, the editors, they still need to have time to do all the benchmarks. And you, you used to work for media, right? I did in the past, yeah. yeah so, so it uh, takes a while to, to get everything benchmarked and written and... So they really need some and time. And do you to then at that moment review. also redo the old benchmark with the latest drivers from the old GPUs, or is it just you have a database? That really depends. For example, if you're going to do a whole roundup with new graphics cards, you might uh, retest all of them with yeah. the newest drivers, so you really see the what the, yeah. the performance of each card is at this specific. Moment. And one week is that enough, or do you need more for that? That also really depends on the test you're going to do. Yeah, but if I think at first it will mostly be. The, just the new cards in comparison with the previous NVIDIA generation yeah. and the current AMD generation. Okay, yeah. That's Makes what sense. most probably yeah. I'll focus on. Yeah. So, you know. We got an interesting question just yeah. in between. Um, what is RTX Op? Uh, El Pertuna. Uh, RTX Ops is the. It shows the performance of the new cores that NVIDIA applies in their new graphics cards. And those are the RT cores, the ray tracing cores, and the tensor cores for artificial intelligence. And the combination of those two. Those are now measured in RTX ops. Yeah. So that's where they really made a big, big step from the uh, previous generation because now they really have dedicated processing power to do those kind of things. Yeah. So it doesn't really uh, say anything about the FPS you will get in, in general games yet. But that's still something we, we have to see and have to wait. But for these specific tasks, they really made a big step in performance from the previous generation. Uh, I have a question from uh, Marek. Uh, so uh, why is this stream? Uh, any new information? Yes, later we will show our cards. Uh, we will have a, a call with uh, Peter, our colleague, he's now in Taiwan. And we will off show off also some uh, cards which we never uh, showed before on the internet. Um, so uh, let's uh, continue. Um, so uh, I think, oh, sorry, uh, so USB Type-C. Also very important, uh, yep. big step. We already showed this at uh, Computex uh, earlier this year uh, because, you know, it makes sense. Type-C is a very um, uh, advanced so, connector. Yeah, it's very versatile. You can do so many different yeah. things that you can already see on the slide. You can do display output, but also uh, data transfer and even charging your device. Yeah, you so, so I think things. that's now also interesting, charging your device because you can, yeah. so you can uh, play a game, 100% um, load, and then charge your device. So this will actually require more power. Yep. So that's, you know, also you need to keep in mind with the TDP for these uh, VJ cars. And let's say the TDP, the power draw, uh, it's very important to calculate this in. Uh, Virtual Link, also something new. Uh, Virtual Link is basically a consortium of, of uh, VR headsets and then VR vendors who are active in the uh, VR scene. And this, uh, uh, they, they made one universal connector. It's like like USB Type-C on the mobile phones, right? Except for Apple. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. So, and you know, I think the new headset from AC already has this, supports this, uh, but you, you will see more and more refreshes in the coming uh, month, year, uh, with this new USB uh, uh, connector. Uh, so more device will support this. Um, then something interesting, um, new and V-Link. I mean, it's a new SLI really connector. New. Yeah, because indeed. we've seen the old SLI connector already for a long, long time. Yeah, I was actually a bit surprised because last year we, we introduced a new uh, the, the, the HB bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the high bandwidth uh, bridge mm -hmm. uh, for SLI. Uh, at that moment, they also cut uh, quad SLI or triple way SLI. I mean, not many people did that. And this also has to do with DirectX 12. Uh, since DirectX 12, the implementation of uh, SLI or let's say multi-GPU for that matter, yeah. 
it's more depending on the uh, game developers than on the driver developers. So it's not, you know, it's still a combination. And the trend is really a little bit that the game developers are not actively supporting multi GPU no, yeah. anymore. So yeah. many games don't benefit from a second graphics card. No, no. But you know, uh, this, this uh, multi GPU connector is also, you can be found. Uh, but maybe this is a step again to. Yeah, who knows? Uh, can be only have. found on the 28 and 2080 Ti. So the 2070 doesn't, uh, doesn't have this connector. Um, so, and then we also have an overview of the, uh, the new uh, RTX uh, GPUs. I still need to get used to RTX. Yeah, we've had GTX for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what was your first experience with GTX? The 7800 GTX. Oh, well, like, one of the first ones. Yeah, that was 2005, I think. Long time ago. So, 13 years ago. GTX, yeah. GTX, 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 so, and now finally something yeah. else. <laughs> Don't blame me if I still say GTX uh, instead well, of RTX. Probably make that mistake a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> of course the differences in CUDA cores, uh, the, the, the core speed, the clock speed, of the boost speed on top of that, uh, the RTX Ops, uh, what we already told you, you know, it's a performance indicator for ray tracing, but at this moment it's very difficult to calculate that back to normal uh, DirectX 11 or 12 games. That's something we really have to see in the future benchmarks yeah. where they really them different TDPs other. and like what I already said, uh, and V-Link, and then uh, 8 gig for the 2070, uh, 8 gig for the 2080, and 11 gig for the 2080Ti. It's more or less the same like with 10 series, right? But faster. Yeah, yeah. Faster indeed, memory indeed. makes a big difference. Yeah. So. so let me check some questions. When benchmarks? Well, like what we just said, you know, uh, they will take time. Adults yeah. are, you know. Let's say, if you look at 2016, I believe after the release of the GPU, it took about two weeks before it came out, uh, yeah. the, the benchmarks. And, you know, maybe the same, maybe different, you never know uh, with NVIDIA. Um, but at this moment, we cannot talk about uh, performance in the normal Still under games. NDA. Yeah, still NDA. So a lot of things are still NDA. Uh, uh, it's also, for example, not allowed to disassemble the VJ card uh, because we planned first to to show you the heatsink. But at this moment, you know, too early, too early, too early. So maybe something uh, interesting. Um, let's talk about some old GPUs. You know, this one. You switch maybe. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, one of our uh, earlier cards. You know, cooling is always very important, and that's also. Uh, what we worked on on this new GPUs, you know, and, and this work, it, it, it doesn't start like, hey, there's a new GPU, we need to do this. No, we already long time ahead. We already start working on this process. And for MSI, I mean, custom cooling always was very uh, important. So uh, I'm going to show you some... And cooling uh, already gets more and more yeah. important because now it directly affects performance. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, in the beginning, it was more for look and feel like uh, this one. I, I used to be sales at that moment when uh, this one was on the market. I still so many of them? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> this is 9600 GT, you know, uh, and this had the seaweed blade fan. <laughs> I, I still remember that. Uh, you know, uh, what you see is a red PCB. Uh, that's, that's from MSI. And at that one moment, uh, and this is an uh, AMD card, uh, one moment, you know, uh, we started with the Cyclone cooler. Uh, you know, um, cooled very good, but it was also quite noisy a uh, long time ago. And then uh, it was think, all single fan. Yeah, it was all single fan. And that then the same leap. year, yeah, we started with this one. And actually, there was this is Twin Frozen. This is the first Twin Frozen. This is the 250 GTS uh, Twin Frozen 1 gig. Can you imagine that? 1 gig? Now we're at 11. I mean, <laughs> you cannot even put all the texture inside your memory. No. It's, uh, um, and before this, we had another twin frozer. I'm, I'm trying to remember. It was deep frozer or something. Or, and, uh, anyway, some, some stupid strange name. Uh, but we got a copyright issue because his name was already uh, registered in, uh, I think, Germany. So that's why we decided to change the name. Uh, maybe in one of the future streams, I will check that name and uh, I will check some picture. Uh, looked completely different, but two fan solution, uh, heat pipes, and, and this is how we start with Tim Frosser. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, then um, more and more Twin Frosters. So this Twin Frosser, uh, let me see, uh, this Twin Frosser 2 and this Twin Frosser 3. So you already see the red line appearing over there. Um, and, and from, you know, it really got more of the gaming look. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the, the, the big problem what we had at that moment was that sometimes we had the best VJ card out there and sometimes, you know, it was terrible. I can hardly say that because it's such a long time ago. <laughs> uh, but, 
you know, this has to do with, with the, 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 the fan profiles, uh, with, with the right cooling, because you can easily make a, a very strong cooling, but if it's too expensive and if it's like uh, too over, uh, over engineered for the GD, uh, GPU, you know, you will not sell anything. Only you will be on top of the... Uh, People will pay extra for something they cannot benefit from. Yeah. They don't get higher frame rate. Indeed. So, so. Uh, then uh, let me check here. Um, Twin Frost 4. Still in blue. And then the, the big change. Let me put this. Maybe you can. Yeah. So. Uh, Twin Force of 4 Advanced. Uh, nice backplate on it. Um, really thick cooler. Yeah, really thick cooler. And you see that also from the top. Um, you see that, that the GPUs are getting uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, and this was not only for MSI. Uh, this was also... Uh, uh, you know, more memory chips uh, on there, uh, bigger VRM. Like a part. physics card there, this one. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> It's so, yeah. so small and tiny yeah, compared the, the to... IG, uh, the IG. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then uh, we had the um, the Twin Frozen uh, 4 and... Uh, uh, what is it? Twin Frozen 5, 5 and, and 6, 6 cards. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this card, uh, Twin Frozen, uh, yeah, really a powerful card. And that moment, you know, really did well in all the benchmarks and... Uh, yeah, one of the best uh, to have at that moment. And this one is clearly an evolution of that. Uh, we, this one already had an LED on the top. Uh, but this one uh, went with RGB LED on the top. Uh, LEDs on the side. Um, yeah, uh, nice backplate. Uh, some extra cooling play between it. And it was really a refinement of five. Yeah, yeah, and this is always difficult, you know, when you make a next generation. How should it look and how should it feel? And, and that's something what we're working on. And that's what we're now going to talk about. Uh, so maybe, um, is, is Peter there? I think we have Peter here. Yeah, oh, oh, we need to... But we need to hear him as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so... Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I, Hello. I, Hello. Hello, Peter. So, still Hello. awake? <laughs> Good evening. Still awake? From Taiwan. Yeah, it's uh, about 10.30 p.m. here. Yeah, so it's just quite strange. Normally we're in the same studio here. And now uh, we're on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, now on the other side of the now world. I've got a whole studio to myself, aka yeah. my hotel room, where I kind of, you know, put on an emergency studio just for the stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're very happy with you. So um, you're now in Taiwan already for several weeks, and you're working with yes. issue R and D and marketing team to to finalize the, uh, the the new RTX series. We can say RTX finally, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It's must really, have been a busy really time, right? messed me up a few times that, you know, I, I you know, writing emails and stuff and you just, it's <laughs> such an automatic thing. You type GTX and you're like, oh, no, 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 it's RTX, you know? So, yeah, yeah it, it does really take a while to get used to. So how's your backspace doing on your keyboard? It's uh, <laughs> getting worn out. <laughs> <laughs> it will take yeah. a while to get used to. Probably so, for the well, next month, you still make that mistake quite often. <laughs> I, I even heard, I think it was in a Linus video or something, uh, I watched that they even said that it might be, even for AMD might be thinking, crap, they're now, they're claiming the R, you know, and RX <laughs> was their thing. So, yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. So, you also really, have some yeah. uh, cool cars over there. So, I'm going to show the, we have the, yeah. the family lineup. Uh, so, yeah, these so are all the cars for 28 and uh, 2080 Ti, which, we will, which will be, uh, let's say, available at launch. Um, right. So, uh, I think most people already saw this, or you can find me on the internet. Um, so, uh, yeah, so maybe you can tell me a little bit about the Arrow? Um, yeah, so the Arrow card, I mean, you probably know the Arrow from our 10 series. We had it there as well. Um, it is a, what we call a, a blower design uh, thermal cooling. So, that basically means it acts like a mini wind tunnel. It has a single fan. A radial fan which kind of just sucks the air in through the back of the cart and then blows it out of the io panel uh, so it acts like a mini wind tunnel and the big benefit from that is that the hot air doesn't end up in your case so it's being ejected straight out of the case yeah, so exhaust fan. however yeah so exhaust fan it is really also because it exhausts the the hot air yeah. out of the out of the io yeah. panel so this, this um, typically is used uh, for workstations and for system integrators right very smaller yeah. systems where you have limited airflow. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I think it's also actually this generation one of our thinnest cards. Okay. So that that yeah. says something about the heat, right? 
Well, yeah, I mean, in a, in a slide you showed earlier, you could see the TDP, uh, right? So the TDP yeah. is this generation, uh, uh, well, relatively a bit higher. Uh, yeah. I believe 1080 Ti and 2080 Ti do, don't, uh, are not that much different. But uh, 2080 and uh, 1080, definitely there's like 40 watts uh, yeah. or more difference. Yeah. And uh, 2070 and 1070, there's also quite a bit of uh, more power draw. Well, um, I don't, don't mind if you see it back in the benchmarks. Earlier, the, the Type C, uh, that yeah. will be, nice. th yeah. that's part of the package. So that will add quite a bit onto the total TDP, the power yeah. usage. Yeah. So, and then we have uh, uh, the, the Ventus. This is a new kind of assortment, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a completely new card. Um, and actually, I've got, uh, it's kind of like an exclusive world's first, I guess. Uh, I actually have a real life sample here with me. So I can maybe show you that. Here it is. Give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's a really nice design. I really like it. Yeah. So um, you, you're flying back tomorrow evening, right? Correct. Yes. You have yeah, still yeah, space yeah. in your suitcase? So in two days, yeah. I will have it in my system. <laughs> I, I kind of sneaked it out of the office today, just like the other cards. So oh, yeah, uh, sure. if they let me keep it, then yeah, but chances are slim. So yeah. Well, and then can, can you show the, the thickness of this VJ card? Yeah, so um, basically, I'll uh, see if I can do it this way. So, this so you can see here, it's uh, about two and a half slots thick. You can see by the um, IO bracket here, which is two yeah. slots, and it sticks out a little bit more than that. So... Uh, and this, by the way, is a uh, 2080. So you can see that by the power connectors, there's a one single 8-pin and the 6-pin connector. So that's a 2080, yeah. RTX 2080. Um, and actually, and this is a, a rough sample because uh, there's actually some uh, some wording missing here. There should be GeForce RTX. So this is actually uh, one of the the first samples that they uh, that they have in so the office. This, this is uh, so, yeah. like a handmade mock-up design or like engineering sample. Something like that, yeah. So uh, actually, some of the screws aren't really 100% tightened yet. I also noticed, and so yeah, it's a really rough sample. But can you uh, maybe explain how this works? Is this uh, putting together those uh, new VGA cards? A little bit. I mean, it's pretty much like you, if you it's see like Lego, right? disassembling a card, there's a whole lot of screws that go through. Actually, you can see uh, at the side here, there's also this, this black plate going through yeah. it. That's like a close quarters cooling, we called it in different cards. And there's actually uh, screws going, uh, I, don't know, I didn't show you guys the, the nice back plate yet, by the way. So there's a nice brushed finish. You can see my nice uh, fingerprints on there. I just wanted to tell you, people were already asking for the back plate. Well, there it is. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Good timing. So it's, it's, it's really nice, to be honest. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of screws going uh, into the back plate. And yeah. actually most of those screws, especially on uh, the back end of the card here, they actually go also right through this, um, yeah, the, the, the close quarters cooling that I'm pointing out. So that yeah. really helps to prevent any bending because as you can guess, this card with this massive cooling is not quite very light. I mean, it is quite heavy, yeah. um, but we did this because, you know, there, we have a reputation to maintain on cooling. You know, you guys know MSI for, for really good uh, cooling. And we want to make sure that we continue that tradition and that you guys know what to expect. So we really want to make sure that this card and all the other cards have really good cooling. So, and this one is like, it's like 2.5 slot or 2.7? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can see here, uh, I'll just see the IO bracket. So as you can see, it Peter sticks out a little bit. perfect in timing. Time. People ask for the IO and what he does. Yeah. I don't even have to I, tell I, him. He does it by himself. I'm reading, I'm reading, <laughs> the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but I mean, so yeah, I mean, there, here's the I.O. So also what, what you guys mentioned before, I mean, you know, you've got your, uh, let's see if I can get it right. So two, three display ports. Okay. Of course, uh, one up here where the DVI connector used to be in uh, previous generations. Mm -hmm. And then the Type-C here, which was also a bit, uh, you know, it, it looks strange on a graphics card, but uh, mostly for display ports. something we have to get used to probably. Style. Yeah, I mean, it's the future and you cannot stop it. Uh, there's a lot of monitors coming out with Type-C connectors even. So you're going to you're gonna probably end up using it in VR yeah. as well. If you need yeah. to charge so, your phone, course, let me just plug it into my, my graphics card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, when I heard that, I was like, yeah, who does that? I mean, it's you, you usually you have like... <laughs> <laughs> I always forget my charger. 
So if I have my PC nearby, I just plug it into my graphics card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, maybe next generation we could do like uh, wireless charging on the back plate. So you yeah. Can just put your <laughs> <on>. <laughs> so to be clear, because I see a lot of chat uh, like, like uh, hey, uh, what about soldering? Or what about RGB? You know, to be 100% clear, these are still mock-up designs. So they're, they're yeah. not 100% finished. You know, this happens in the coming days, uh, the coming week. Uh, we have a different production schedule uh, per model. Um, and, and, you know, leading up to these uh, designs, uh, we also need to make a lot of decisions. Uh, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think last, yeah, earlier last week, uh, Peter, you know, he showed me different backplates. Like, we do want to go with this, this design or this design. And then we're looking at it. And even Peter, I remember you showed me quite funny. You showed me that we already made the cover with RTX and GTX, right? Because at that moment, we also didn't know what the final name was. Yes. Yeah, I mean, NVIDIA is, is a company that very tightly regulates uh, NDA and, and the information they give out, uh, even to us, or maybe even especially to us, because, you know, <laughs> uh, we need this information to work on it. But um, as soon as we get it, you know, things move really fast because then we need to finalize uh, the, the box design, uh, the design of the cars themselves, and everything goes to the factories in China. And so, you know, when, it, when it's in a factory, uh, you, you, yeah, there's a lot of people hanging around there, you know, trying to catch a glimpse of anything new yeah um but yeah i mean so so they also wait until the latest possible moment to tell us uh, so yeah. indeed we, we mocked up uh, a sample which said you know g4 gtx uh, series and uh and even 11 or 20 series we also didn't know we yeah. were also speculating like what will it be yeah um so yeah but it's just a matter of guessing at that point yeah, yeah, it's like 50-50, you know, it's yeah. really, uh, there was no way for us of, of telling what it would be. So, yeah, for us as well, it was like, okay, when we found out uh, uh, Monday, that, that was really uh, that was really cool. I stayed up uh, till quite late, so uh, next day in the office, I was a bit uh, groggy, as you might uh, imagine. Like you're always here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We're getting exactly. an interesting yeah, question you know here. I mean. yeah, yeah, My yeah. Magnificent <laughs> Gaming asks, what's the, diff the, what's the display performance for the USB Type-C? That's a good question. That is a USB 3.1 Gen 2. Um, yeah, so the display performance. Oh, the display but performance. Underlying, it's just display port, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Pretty uh, much, yeah. I think it's like comparable to mini display port or display port, mm -hmm. just a normal one. So something like this. I see, anyway, uh, I see a question. Is Ventus the new armor card? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, this Very is good a good question. Yeah. But no, it's um, actually um, each generation, uh, NVIDIA, you know, they, they announced a couple of prices uh, during their presentation as well. And so they will always ask us to create a card that gets as close to their MSRP as possible. And last generation, I believe that was uh, Arrow or maybe there was a card without a name. It was kind of black and white as well, but yeah. didn't really have a name. So it was like, uh, what was it, maybe 8G something, you know, with the memory, but anyway. This generation, it's actually Ventus. So Ventus will be the card that actually gets as close to the MSRP or should be as close to the MSRP as possible. Yeah. Of course, this also depends on what shops will charge because you for it. They are free to add on big margins yeah. if they want to do that. Yeah. And what happens uh, to the Bitcoin mining hype? Now, yeah, at this I mean, moment, don't worry about that's that. That's really not, uh, yeah. Let's yeah, really, so let's hope. if I mean, we, we because are also, <laughs> I also see a lot of that. questions about pricing, you know, because there was a lot yeah. of confusion when uh, NVIDIA Day announced during the event the pricing yes. for the GPUs and for the Founder Edition, which was like for the 1080, of, uh, sorry, the 2080 Ti, 20, of uh, 200 US dollars more. Um, you know, all VJ cars will be priced, you know, uh, also in a range. And, and uh, like what Peter says, we will have the Arrow. Uh, maybe we can show the slide uh, if you look at the family. Uh, we have the Arrow card um, um, at the, um, uh, how do you say? Uh, yeah, as entry level card, single fan, exhaust fan. So that's typically more appealing for system integrators, uh, for uh, workstations, uh, you know, the, the professional. Deep learning. Yeah, yeah, this kind of applications. Then uh, we have uh, Ventus, new card, uh, dual fan. And, and these two, you know, will be at the, the, the entry of the range. And, and Ventus is uh, one uh, which should uh, hit the MSRP. Uh, but pricing is very, very difficult because everybody thinks yeah. this is the MSRP. And, you know, it's like suggested retail price. And, and this is uh, why it's difficult. And I'm now talking for Europe, you know. I'm, well, let's first talk about USA. USA will maybe soon have a, a big problem because of Trump uh, is, is having uh, import taxes. And uh, I, they told me if this is approved, uh, there will be like a 25% uh, you can add on 
uh, electronics. And I'm not sure if this includes VJ car, but if this is true, you know, the pricing will be the same like in Europe with VAT. Uh, if we're yeah. going to talk, uh, uh, and let's hope this not happened for our uh, people from the USA. So um, if we talk about Europe, then, you know, all our cards are manufactured and all the costs uh, of MSI, we're a company based in Taiwan, are in US dollars. Uh, the GPUs, the memory, uh, the PCBs, all the business is on the US dollars. So when we uh, sell this in Europe, uh, uh, you know, there will be exchange rate to Euro. And this exchange rate now, US dollar, uh, um, Euro is also changing. And this can also have an impact on the price. Then you still have the, uh, the, the distributors, the, the resellers, you know, and you always know when there is a shortage, you know, people try to ask more money. Um, and when we look at these new GPUs, I already saw the allocation for the coming uh, uh, weeks. Uh, yeah, there is, I, I think uh, what also uh, the NVIDIA CEO said, there is uh, more than double the output compared to two years ago, Pascal, when it launched. And, and I think we can see this in the market as well. Um, so it should be easier to get your hands on a yeah, card if yeah, you don't yeah. want. But I also, I talked with some, uh, some e-tailers today and they said oh, everything, all the pre-order uh, at this moment is already sold out. Uh, because, yeah, we will start shipping stock and from the 20th of September, uh, this is allowed to sell uh, at the yep. resellers. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you want to have one and, and, you know, I always tell the people, please wait until the benchmarks are there. But I know some people, you know, they, they uh, just want to have the newest, the latest, the baddest. I, I cannot say yet, you know, I'm waiting for the benchmarks. But, you know, just uh, uh, make sure you pre-order because uh, the, the first wave uh, probably runs out very soon or is already out in some uh, shops. Um, but, you know, the delivery, I also, also saw the delivery schedule is getting more and more each week. And uh, what I can see now normally, you know, after a month or two, you know, this is uh, uh, not a... Not an issue anymore, you know, then there should be enough supply. And also keep in mind... It always takes a bit of time at the launch. Yeah, and there will also series. be a transition period yeah. because 1080 and 1080 Ti, uh, most likely, you know, they will fade away, you know, they will be phased out and then the stock will be depleted and then the, the 28 and 2080 Ti or, or 2070 will take their place. So, okay, so yeah. um, uh, let's talk about... Um, um, let me skip some slides here. Um, <laughs> So we've seen we've seen all we want to see about the Ventus, right? Yeah. I, mean, I know there's there's like some shiny parts here, um, like a little bit of uh, transparency. Um, the, the, okay, the diamond yeah. shapes. There's no LED behind there, by the way, just to be no clear. LED. So yeah, no that was LED, also a question um, we had in this card. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it's I really like the in, the clean industrial look of this card. Um, yeah, it's I, really really well done. Yeah, we have a, a question from Spoof Pass. Uh, so basically, these cards uh, uh, will be even more expensive than Nvidia says. Uh, no, not will be, can be. You know, it really depends on the model. If we because we depends had somebody on the model and on the market. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and um, and the economic uh, situation. But uh, uh, for example, if we do lightning. For sure, this will be more expensive. If you talk about a uh, water cooling uh, version, you know, this will be more expensive. If you talk about the single fan, you know, or the, the um, uh, this, this fan, this, this new one, the dual fan, you know, then it will be uh, close to the uh, MSRP, like uh, 999, right? Uh, US dollar. Because, uh, because you need to imagine that what NVIDIA announces, the MSRP is kind of like the bare bones bottom price. So yeah. anything else, you know, of course, we want to make the cards, you know, not just a good card, but also some fancy stuff uh, like uh, overclocking, LED, good yeah. fans, ball yeah. bearings, you know, so we go all out to make sure you get the best quality. Um, but I mean, that adds a bit of cost. Absolutely. Admittedly, yeah. it's not like doubling the cost, luckily, but <laughs> still it will add some yeah, some dollars yeah. to the cost. So let's talk about uh, Duke. Um, I have a slide of that one. Yeah, so this is on a new Duke. And, and wow, you know, I, I I still remember two years ago, you and me, we were in Taiwan. I was there yeah. because I didn't have a, I wasn't allowed to drive in Holland. <laughs> they took that you very speed much. Speed demon you. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's why I said, yeah, I can stay awake longer. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know. It's a bad example for our viewers. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, yeah, happens. Yeah. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll cut that out. Oh, no, wait, <laughs> <laughs> but, Nobody uh, heard that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still remember, you know, we were preparing 10, uh, of, uh, the, the 10 series at the moment, uh, 1080, 1070, etc. you know. And they came to us, hey, we have this new uh, car special for China and we're going to call it Duke. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah of somebody at moments, <coughs> we need a name. And we were like re really busy with preparing our gaming acts. 
uh, those cards, you know, and, and uh, this is special China version. We didn't want, of, we didn't have a plan to sell in USA or Europe. So we just said, yeah. you know, you just pick something. And yeah, somebody said Duke, Duke Nukem Duke. And yeah. we said, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, why we not? We already had the balls of steel yeah. thing going yeah. on with the gaming. So we were kind of like, yeah, that, you know, there's a link there. Why yeah. not? Yeah. So do you also have Duke on hand? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, I do. Cool. So I'll just pull it up for you. And this one made quite a development from the previous series, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the previous series was already quite fancy. Uh, it was also a three fan design. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that one was kind of like, you know, it was a neutral color, uh, had some uh, carbon and some LED. And so this one takes it one step further. I mean, I could, I, I guess you could also say that this is like the, the three fan design for, for armor. Okay. Yeah, you know, the traditional armor type of card, uh, because it is positioned below our Gaming X Trio. Although, um, yeah, this is also a three fan design. And I don't know if you guys can see this quite well. I'm getting it a little bit closer. So this actually uses the same fans that are on our 10 series um, graphics cards, the gaming graphics cards, so Torx 2.0 fans with yeah. double ball bearings as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a really good card, I have to say, with three fans. And again, the three fans, and I'll show you the side a bit as well. Here you go. It's quite a thick heat sink. And again, this is um, judging from the power connectors on the other side. I can quickly show you that as well. This is a 2080, so RTX 2080. Yeah. And it's really long, isn't it? You can, if you see it's, the PCB, it, it the, the cooler forever. is even quite a lot longer. It's, it's like a spaceship, you know? Like, <laughs> like but, but yeah, maybe but, you can show that. The cooler is longer than the PCB, right? And then what did you yes. put on, on the back there? Well, yeah, so basically you can see it on the back plate here. So uh, quite a nice back plate also. It's more like a, I don't know if it's like really, yeah, it has a bit of a brush finish as well, but very fine. And then on the back, actually what we did is we, we tried to close the design off a bit. So you don't leave a gaping hole at the back, but it's nice and, and closed. Also because the uh, the fins, they run um, this way. So basically top to bottom. Yeah. So you don't need airflow to go out of the sides. So that's why we, you can actually get away with closing this off without- Can you show that on, on the webcam please? Very good. But there's yeah. some sort of, yeah. Oh, this way. Yeah, yeah. here we go. Hey, that looks cool. So, here you go. Yeah. So, yeah. It, so the it, fins it does really go it... all the way to the back of the card. Yeah. That's yes. a huge yeah. cooling surface. That's, yeah, that's correct. And so it's also because um, maybe it's, it, it could be that it's a bit overkill, but we always try to look for the right balance between uh, the fans don't <laughs> have to work too hard. So you don't, you don't get that whoosh noise. Um, and still having really good cooling. And as you could see on the 2080, um, yeah, the, the TDP was quite a bit higher. So we want to be safe and make sure that you have the best cooling and the best performance and there's no throttling going on. Yeah, okay. So, and, and uh, talking about uh, cooling performance, uh, what we always do, we have the Torx 2.0 fans, which were used to in, in, in uh, this card. Uh, you can see it very small, uh, but which was our uh, 1070, 1080, uh, uh, gaming cards, uh, and, yes. and these now go one segment lower to the Duke, which is basically our three fan armor. Yeah, I mean, there's a pattern here, and I guess you could say that with uh, last generation's armor, so the 10 series armor, we also used the first generation of Torx fan, which we used on our Twin Frost of 5, yeah. which were, you know, re also really successful. It was the first time we used the Torx fan. So every time it seems like at the moment, what we do is a generation, the next generation, we put the Torx fan on, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the middle series, basically. Yeah, okay, so one step, okay, cool. So yeah. each time we innovate but something proven, for the high end. Really good, so yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, why absolutely. we also use them. Yeah, so um, this one also comes with a black plate. Uh, this is 2080s or so, it's eight gig of memory. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Yeah, but this, uh, let's talk about PCB design, because this is all based on the reference PCB, right? Yes, so the Ventus and uh, the Duke uh, are both based on reference PCB design, even though the Duke is quite a bit longer uh, than the reference, but this is down to the heatsink, so yeah. uh, this side, here we go. So actually the PCB, you can see it kind of ends right there. So the heatsink is extended to get rid of the excess heat, uh, also because this model will uh, is meant to at least i don't know the exact clock speeds yet uh, but uh, is meant to be a little bit faster than ventus for example so this one should be clocked a bit higher we're also getting a question how thick is this card 
Um, it's about the same as Ventus, I, I would say. I mean, I'm not sure That's if you guys can see it. It's about two and a half slots. Here. No, it's not really yeah, two so and a half. It's also two and a half slots. Yeah, there you go. There you can see it. Actually, right. you know, if it's two and a half or three, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's not even two and a half. It's more like 2.3, to be yeah. honest. But that doesn't matter. I mean, it's more than two, so, yeah. you know... And, and that's really due to the GPU this generation, you know, that we need to use uh, bigger coolers uh, to, to make sure we can overclock. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is reference PCB. We also have something uh, based on our own PCB. I have a slide of that. Uh... Yeah. Well, actually, before we go to that, maybe I can show one more thing, which is the Duke actually uh, Too late. has a very nice <laughs> LED. <laughs> ah. So actually, we're here where you can see Duke. Uh, there's RGB LED included. And, People uh, are already you, asking, where is the RGB? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't have a car without RGB these days, guys. It's uh, it's just not done. Yeah, so, well, and also, this is also yeah. what I want to add, because, you know, on, on the internet, there's always a lot of discussion. Yeah, RGB LED! Or, you know, ah, come on, I don't need it, you know, my case is closed. But this adds quite a lot of cost. So we as a manufacturer always need to think, okay, which cars will we add RGB LED on? And will the customers like it, you know, because you need to watch out with the cost. Yeah. Yeah, it's always, a, you know, again, if you make a graphics card now uh, on the lower end, let's say, so like the Ventus, you know, like more entry level yeah. friendly pricing, there yeah. you can get away with not including uh, any LED or RGB LED. But, you know, if you really want to uh, uh, do a high end card, you can't really uh, exactly. do it without RGB. Um, at least that's our view and, and the, the, the vibe we get from the market and yeah. our, is what our information says. So there's a lot of mixed opinions, I know. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's if you don't do it, your your card will be labeled as like cheap and they, they, they <laughs> yeah, left yeah, things yeah. out uh, <laughs> to save on cost. And so yeah. it becomes more of a budget card. Yeah. Uh, and you don't want that, you know, because yeah. it definitely is not a budget card. Let's no, be no, honest no. I, I put a slide with uh, the, uh, yeah, actually the, the, they are renders. So please people, you know, yes. we are in a, still a very early stage, but we wanted to yes. show you today already a sneak peek of what we are doing. Um, exactly. And then these slides show you a 3D rendering of how it will look. Um, and then, yeah. you know, also what Peter has in his hands, small details might still change, but it's just yeah. a matter of days, week, you know, before we will start shipping. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's about final. Um, but this is just to give you an impression how the RGB LED looks like. And it's yeah. static, but, you know... But Exactly. The LED, of course, is in there, but it also shines through this side on the front, basically. So yeah. there you also get a nice shine. With a, it's, it's got the, this milky glass that you guys know and love from the, the, the lightning of last generation. So we really went all out with that on, oh, on cool. the cars this generation. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to my favorite one. All right. People were already <laughs> asking, is think, Duke the best cooling you can one, get? To be honest. Yeah. But so, there is so, yeah, even that, better that, cooling. That's, that's a good question. Is Duke the best cooling what we got? Well, you know, it's not about, only about cooling because, yeah, Duke has a, uh, I think it's the best reference design we have with a, with a really beefed up cooling, you know, and you will see that in performance and especially the, the throttling as well, you know, in, in, the, in the 10 and the 20 series, uh, you know, it has automatic turbo boost, the GPU, so you need to make sure that it stays as long cool as possible, otherwise it will automatically throttle and you will lose performance. So the higher sustained clock speed you can have, the more performance you have. And, and that's the art with making a good uh, GPU cooler. And, and that's really a big difference with these older cars. Yes, they all absolutely. have fixed clock speeds. But yeah. nowadays, if your cooling is better, your card will boost higher and you will directly yeah. get the better FPS in your game. Yeah, and the longer you can cool your GPU properly, the longer you have this uh, clock speed. Uh, yeah. So the faster about, it is. I saw some tests a while ago as well yes. last year. No NDA, no oh, last year. Okay. The 10 series. <laughs> and it's, they said, uh, you know, the clock speeds out of the box actually don't say as much anymore because if your cooling cannot handle sustained cooling and, and prevent the GPU from throttling, the clock speed will fall quite quickly. So you will have the, the, the high, really high clock speed that's included on the box or something you know, yeah. indicated um, for like a few seconds or maybe even a minute. But who games for a minute? You know, yeah. you game for half an hour, half an hour, an Three hour, hours. hours on end. So you want that clock speed to be sustained for however long you play. Yeah, and absolutely. that's the most important thing. Yeah. So so people should not watch for the highest clock speeds on the on the box, but they should really look at benchmarks, you know, what yep. a sustainable clock speed is. 
yeah, where media will test and they will tell you if it's just, uh, you know, at the beginning that it will have a high clock speed or if it also still maintain that clock speed after half an hour of yeah. benchmarking, for yeah, example. Indeed, indeed. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, you know, we talked about Juke and, and Juke is, is a reference PCB with a three fan cooling. And yes. this is MSI custom gaming PCB with three fan cooling, right? Correct, yeah. Um, and actually, uh, as luck would have it, I actually have this a sample guy. on hand here as well. <laughs> yeah. In so, so will you bring all of them? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some samples later on. What did you say to the security guard uh, when you left the uh, MSI headquarters? I believe it was something like, uh, Ni hao, bye bye, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, so it's, uh, yeah, HQ was, was uh, good enough to, to lend me these uh, just for the purpose of this stream. So exclusively to show you guys uh, also because this one is actually very special because this one is actually uh, um, less final than the other cars I showed you. Um, I will show you what is less final about it in a minute. Um, first, of course, we've got uh, the new, let's see, how can I best show you guys this? Here we go. The new Torx fan 3.0 and the difference is in the, the little notches you see. You see the little stripes on the fan. So these are extra, um, uh, extra aerodynamic. Uh, I, little Peter, I also will... uh, put a slide up so people can see it. Yeah, and yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, so basically there are two notches on there. Yeah, on, on each um, what we call dispersion fan. So you've got the normal fans actually, uh, or let me get this straight. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, actually, it's the normal fan that has it. I was uh, looking at it. So here you see, uh, this is one of the dispersion fans. You can see by the like the dent, the that the fan blade is has a bit of a different shape. Yeah. And the fan blade that has the notches is actually what we call the traditional fan blade. So it, it has a, a normal shape, although it's quite curved. But um, it has the, the notches in there that will actually, once it's spinning, and it doesn't spin this way, folks, just to, to show you, uh, because it needs to get the air down, so it's actually spinning this way. Yeah. And what that does is it will put the air, put the air over this fan blade and kind of concentrate it before it hits this fan blade and is pushed down. So this will result in a little bit less turbulence. So if you're into aerodynamics, turbulence is what also causes the whoosh noise, the, the extra noise. So it should reduce noise even more while also um, concentrating the airflow a bit more when it's being pushed down. So that would, should also, uh, uh, or will also, I should say, result in better airflow, better sustained airflow downwards. So it will give you better both cooling. better cooling performance and a more silent graphics card. Yeah, so that's actually you know what we're always looking to do. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That balance. Yeah. Yeah. So perfect for uh, for this generation. We're getting Again, a few questions about the, about the fans. Yes. Why are they different sizes? Yeah, and that's then, a really good uh, question. People are uh, saying I, <laughs> people. I can tell you. <laughs> it's quite funny on the chat how they're saying they, it's a small. Uh, uh, o, uh, uh, capital O and capital of a uh, small O again. Yeah. And now we have small O and big capital <laughs> O and you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now on the Duke, they were all the same size. Smart guy. On this card. Sorry. <laughs> Smart guy that he noticed. Yeah, 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 you have a keen eye, my friend. That's actually uh, uh, true because this is, I, I believe, if I'm correct, a nine centimeter fan, and these uh, other two are both uh, ten centimeters. And why we did that is you guys saw the new SLI or NVLink connector, right? So there needs to be space, which is actually what you see here, this part. There's two screws, one here and one uh, there. So if you want to use the NVLink, at the moment you can't get to it because this part is blocking it. So you need to, be, you need to unscrew these screws cool. and then take this part off. Yeah. And that will, um, as you can see behind here, yeah. That will unveil the NVLink connector. Like a transformer. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So it's basically, you know, if you don't use it, um, you it, can won't hide ruin, it. it won't ruin your view yeah. if you don't yeah. like it. Yeah. So, and just, so it's just to be compatible for NVLink uh, bridge on top of that. Yeah, so we, we had to do something, um, you know, to make the, the space available and we yeah. couldn't push a 10 centimeter, centimeter card even down further because then it would hit the motherboard. So, you know, mm -hmm. a nine centimeter fan it is. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, cool. I think uh, that answer. Look, somebody look into the fan blades, by the way, I don't know. Let's see if I can. Somebody I wants to, to uh, Peter, somebody, you need to give your email address. Somebody wants to mail a kidney to you. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Um, now, but if you look into the fan blades here, you can see there's actually a bit of a weird pattern going on, right, on the um, uh, on the fins inside, right? It's a bit of a wavy pattern. I think you have a render for it. Yeah, right? I have a show. render. Yeah. Because that's also one of the new, um, yeah, innovations. It looks uh, quite a lot different than in the G previous series, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we I have the previous the series previous, I have uh, here. Gaming X Trio, the 1080 Ti. We also had what we call the wave curved cooling system. And so there we actually tried, you know, bending uh, the actual, uh, yeah, the actual fins in a waved shape at the top. Yeah. This is the second version of it. So okay. basically all we did is that the fins are still straight. If you look at it from the top, you won't be able to see that pattern. So basically what we did is at the top, they're wavy and, um, <laughs> they are interchanging basically so uh, they're a little bit like next to each other as you can see on the render and why we've done this is because uh, that makes the top of the heatsink a bit more round and as you will all know air is kind of like water so when it hits an object be it uh, a fin or something else if it's a straight surface it will start to create some turbulence and noise so again this what what this does is it, it should create uh, or to, should ensure that there's less turbulence because it's a more of a rounded surface that the air hits when it's pre being pushed down. So that should result in, again, a lower noise uh, for you guys yeah. while not uh, getting any uh, hit on thermal performance. Mm -hmm. So again, a really small innovation and, uh, but yeah, it should push the noise down even further together yeah. with the, the, the fans and other things that we've put in there. So there's actually a lot of innovation going into these things. And we've got like people, you know, walking, uh, working in, in like wind tunnels and, you know, their faces all going like while testing these fans um, and, and all these heat sinks. So there's a lot of work that goes into this. Yeah. So when we say, if you can already see on the website, we say it really, you know, mastery of aerodynamics. That is really what we're aiming for. We really want to get the maximum out of it, even the smallest details. Um, we want to maximize the, the performance and minimize the noise. And, and how does this work? Because I'm sure the engineer didn't make this last night or, or uh, you know, no. in, in the last two weeks. So, but you know, this, these GPUs, we're not get, I know we're not getting them uh, uh, months up front. No, well, we get them, true. but then I, I know, you know, they, bore, they, they make a hole in it, you know, that it's not functional. But that's for physical. Yeah. They break them on purpose. Yeah, they, they break them on <laughs> yeah, purpose that we cannot do yeah. benchmarks. But I, I mean, with TDP and then heat, how can we design a heat sink already for these kind of new generations? That's a great question. I mean, the, the, the innovations themselves, you know, it's not that's mine, like it's a from the chat. Process. Yeah, that's like a constant process. So this is you know, what our guys are constantly working on and testing things to try new, uh, finding new ways of optimizing this process and the cooling. But more towards your answer, how do you even know if a cooling will work if you don't have a functional GPU you can test it on to see yeah. will it cool the TDP, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Of course, we have a lot of experience. So uh, our guys uh, uh, you know, do great work. Um, you. You could see that in the previous generation as well. Yeah. Uh, almost all our coolings are really excellent. So they know what they're doing. That's first. Secondly is um, they get, instead of a functional GPU to test the cooling on, they get what we call a heating plate. And the heating plate is basically just a plate that will simulate the heat. It should be about the same size as the die will be, uh, the GPU size. And what it, that will do is that will simulate the heat of the TDP that the GPU can produce. And on that heating plate, they will then make, you know, they will fix this cooling as if it were a GPU. And then they will just run some tests to see, hey, is this cool enough? Or do we need to beef up the heat sink? Do we need to make some changes? Yeah. So um, that's basically the only way we have of testing it. So if it turns out, for example, that the eventual GPU actually gets hotter than the heating plate uh, indicated, yeah. yeah, then we might have a slight, well, miscalculation or yeah. it might end up a bit hotter than we intended. And, and, and to be clear, um, we already worked long time on this, right? Because uh, yes. I believe uh, you were already in, in December also in Taiwan and uh, you also uh, yeah. talked with engineers about the next gen and then you were cool. already talking about design. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Well, the next gen, I mean, you, you, yeah, of course, we always ask our engineers, you know, hey, have you heard anything about it? Because we also hear, hear rumors, you know, but um, they didn't really know anything. But obviously, 
knowing that at some point it's going to come, we I think are your focus go is always a, uh, going to prepare Peter, something. I think your focus um, is a little bit, uh, your camera oh. is a little bit off. Let's see if this improves it. Can I get the focus back? Here we go. Yeah, better. Yeah. A lot better. <laughs> we can Sorry see you again. Auto Hi, welcome guys. back, Peter. <laughs> Yeah, are you, is your eyesight as blurry as mine? And uh, about my drinking? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah. So, so we, of course, we always, even if we don't know exactly when the new generation of products are coming, we we also follow the rumors. We get maybe some indication of Nvidia that they might, or, or AMD, you know, whatever comes next. Uh, we might get some indication that they say, hey, you need to prepare. But usually our guys are so experienced that they are already working on something. It's very of simple. Of course, it needs if, to if be you customized finish, based on what's if, going on. But If you finish sorry. one generation and it's finished, you can start on the next one, right? You take all the feedback from the customers yeah. and... Uh, uh, you know, yeah. we, we listen to input from the, from the, we check the reviews, you know, what we need to improve, what, what yeah. our strong points are. And from that moment, you can slowly start working towards the next generation. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's going to be a next generation. So you always, yeah. of course, you work towards one generation. And once you do that, uh, you even during the generation, we will always try to improve things like yeah. our lightning traditionally always has some new innovations, uh, be it, you know, heat sinks in the uh, back plate or whatever. But, you know, and, and these things, some of them might work. Some of them might not work quite as intended. We always try to test it as much as possible, but sometimes things don't quite work out as you, uh, as you think they will. So it's but, really a matter of trial and error. Yeah, I mean, you have to do that in order to, you have to take some risks in order to get uh, further along your way that, to your ultimate graphics card. Also, design. if you can show that, Peter, uh, that's basically also what we did with that VGA card. Uh, can you show it? What exactly do you want to yeah, show? Just, just show it there, yeah. So, um, like, uh, we started with the Lightning, which was 3 fan in last generation. Then we even had a 1080, uh, 1080 Ti Trio, was a 3 fan, you know. Yeah. And, that already took some improvements and now we take the next step. So this is actually the yes. third generation uh, triple fan uh, from MSI, the, the trio. Yeah. yeah, actually the 980 Ti uh, Lightning already had three fans indeed. So that was, I think, yeah. technically the, the first. That was the black one, right? The black, black with yellow. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I remember. That one had the big OC, I think. On. Yeah. yeah, yeah, indeed, nice one, yeah. yeah. It was a really good card as well. But again, you know, so so we try to we always innovate, and and you know sometimes you fail, sometimes uh, it's a big success, but yeah. you have to take that risk, or else you you won't get uh, closer to perfection if such a thing exists. And and um, uh, this is gaming PCB, so it's it's our custom yes. uh, design PCB. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What what did we improve? Um, well. Yeah, there's multiple things. So basically, uh, we will always use high quality components. So, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Moss, uh, fats, um, yeah. uh, high quality chokes, uh, capacitors. It's a very technical thing. But basically, we want to make sure that it can handle all the power you throw at it okay. and, and that it can continue for a long time. Also, the same with like, like the ball bearing. So it's built with longe longevity or durability in mind. Secondly, we also tend to beef up the power design a bit, especially for our gaming graphics cards, because we want to make sure that if there's any overclocking possibility, and I mean, for this generation, it remains to be seen. We need to wait the benchmarks. Okay, not uh, about I, I know that Jensen said something in his presentation about that it's really good for overclocking, but I, I really have no idea. So I, I really hope so, because the Pascal generation... Uh, yeah, was, was you could overclock a bit, but not quite as much as uh, the previous Nine generation. Series, so, yeah. Who knows, you know, maybe the power delivery is ready beasts. for it. Yeah, exactly. So at least we want to make sure that the power delivery is ready for it. So you will find more phases mm -hmm. on these uh, on these cards. Then I, I have somebody asking, uh, Marek, uh, what about the fourth fan? Fourth fan? The, which fourth fan? <laughs> yeah, when, when you add it on. I think not a good idea. I saw some designs in the past from yeah. some other vendors and it was really noisy and actually it was disturbing the airflow. Yeah, what you need to keep in mind is, you know, I've actually also seen cards which on the side, by the way, I haven't sh shown you the side yet, so I'll do that now. Um, so there's also um, LED in here where it says MSI. It's also RGB? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, everything's RGB on this card. But um, more to the point is, um, wait, let's see. So more to the point is that, um, what was I going to say? Late. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I see. Can, can you show me the, the back plate? Because if you show the slide. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you might notice there's something a bit different about this one. A bit different. A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> so you, slightly, you, slightly. Again, you took an engineer example from somebody's desk. Yeah, yeah. So actually, <laughs> um, so to tell me, what is final? If you, yeah, the, the, the one on your slide, because if you watch the presentation on uh, in Germany, uh, after the presentation, they showed some of the cards. Uh, and actually, the Gaming X trial was part of the lineup that they showed. Uh, it was only like a few seconds that they showed it. They, they said just a few words about it. But there you could see that the backplate on the actual card will be uh, the more of the gunmetal gray. So kind of like on the front of the card here, you can see it's more like uh, the gunmetal, uh, like, whoop, here we go. So it's more gray. So okay, yeah. the card will be a, a brushed gunmetal gray. Yeah. So and this is also what you do in Taiwan, right? Uh, you get different choices, and they say, "Well, we better go for this together with the team." Um, yeah, you one know. of the lucky ones who gets to give advice, indeed. So yeah. then I say, you know, Golden Dragon, eh, it can look nice, but it needs to fit with the design, you know. So if the rest of the card had also some golden elements, like mm -hmm. our really nice notebooks, you know, uh, yeah. the ones that we showed on Computex, then I would say, yeah, sure, you know, it fits the design. But now the gold kind of, yeah. It, it doesn't fit with the rest of the card. Yeah. So that's why uh, I was one of many people that, that said, you know, ah, probably best but to just this, stick this with the This also has to do with place. culture, right? Because the, the, uh, yes. we, the, these cards are sold worldwide and each region, they have different preferences. So we need yes. to make one, we need to make everybody happy. Yeah, and this is like almost impossible. You you can never make everybody happy. I mean, yeah. the proof is in the fact that a lot of people say, eh, "Your RGB, I don't, I don't need it, I don't want it." You know, so it's it's impossible to make everybody happy. Yeah, but you need to strike a balance. Yeah. yeah. So this I'm now showing because I have some questions about uh, the uh, RGB LED, how it looks. So this is an impression uh, this, because Peter, yeah, I mean, he doesn't have power. <laughs> you, you don't have a power <laughs> supply over there, right? I, I do have power, but to be honest, this card is actually I don't know if you guys can see this, and there's probably fingerprints all over it but there's actually not even it this is so um fake mock-up design yeah. that there's, yeah. there's actually no display connectors in this one <laughs> this one was actually put together today just to be able to show you guys oh, cool. uh this card up close yeah so well, special thanks to our pm team for that if you're watching yeah thanks guys <laughs> he, i'm sure he's already in his bed Probably, but you know, we'll show them tomorrow. <laughs> Quite later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so uh, yeah, to, to talk about RGB LED. Uh, so on the front they have RGB LED, and also uh, on top this one has RGB LED. And we're also working on new software, right? Correct. Yeah. So um, you know, we also know that our Mystic Light software. We always try to make it really good, but. Uh, I think the, what happened is at the beginning we, we started off with the godlike motherboard. Yeah. Now we're at the first, first. For, first motherboard with RGB yeah. LED in there. Uh, we made some software for it. At that point, it was really simple, you know, because it only had to control a few lights. Uh, but then, you know, we, we got more components and graphics cards with LED, and we, we wanted to, um, you know, centralize that control. So it had to be compatible with a lot more products. And these products, remember, they don't they don't uh, come out or, or get released at the same time. So it's like random when new products get released and they all need to be compatible. And then yeah. you get a lot of other vendors uh, also producing like RGB memory, RGB case fans, RGB, RGB everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything's <laughs> RGB these days. Uh, maybe there's RGB chairs even, I don't know. But, you know, and everything needs to be compatible or you at least you try to. And so it, it kind of became messy at some point because we tried to include so much in such a short time. Um, that it didn't really work as intended. So um, yeah, there's, a, there's an overhaul of the <laughs> Mystic Light software happening. Um, I don't quite know. I think in the coming weeks, there should be a public release, depending on, because we're really doing our testing this time, making sure the software should work, uh, uh, not too buggy or, you know, and everything should be uh, supported. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's in the coming weeks, Hopefully, there should be a final release for you okay. guys, and, and it will cool. also support these cards, but also, of course, the previous generation, yeah. if you have one. That okay. software should be tons better than the current Mystic Lite you might be using. Yeah, so guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, just drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll try to answer them. Uh, Tim, it's uh, probably proteins and uh, Diet Coke, <laughs> as always. He, he was asking, what am I drinking? Yeah. Uh, so... Um, can get drivers, RGB, 
Yeah, yeah. so um, let me check. Um... Someone's asking about the, the display outputs on this card. Which ones will it get? I know they're not installed on this specific model. No, but... it's exactly the same as you get on uh, reference. Uh, let's see if I can show so... you this. It's quite easy. I mean, you can see by the shapes, right? Here's, yeah. the, here's the Type-C. Uh, here's a display port, here's a display port, HDMI, and here is another display port. So Sh it's be. the same as on the other cards. Yeah, so yeah. basically all the three GPUs get the same outputs. Yes. So yeah. no DVI right. anymore. No, no DVI, no. I mean, you might be able to, if you really need DVI, you might be able to get like a, uh, an adapter or yeah. something. Uh, I, the, the, I don't believe it's included in the box. Yeah. Also because DVI, come on guys, you know, you need to get on board with the hype train, 144 hertz, you need that. So you need the bandwidth don't have for it already. high refresh rate this, monitors. Yeah, like an HDR, you know, you need that to be future-proof, so... Yeah, well, I, if I look at, at monitors nowadays, you know, uh, HDR, uh, uh, 144 yep. hertz, you know, price coming down, uh, yes. uh, you know, uh, angled screens, uh, of curved screens, you know, it's, it's really getting interesting for gamers, and uh, DVI doesn't uh, have the bandwidth to support that. So, yeah, uh, yeah so, so it's kind of like an, 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 what we in the business call, I believe, legacy. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, legacy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, so uh, um, we want to, of course, if, if you have really old screens and for business purposes, often you will see this kind of connector still, also on motherboards, for example, uh, are still included because a lot of businesses will keep using older monitors for long, as long as possible. But these but cards are not meant for office work, right? I, I, see oh, somebody, no. I see somebody saying DVI is on 2070 stock. So he means it's uh, on there. So I need to check that, could be. I haven't seen that actually. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, somebody is asking, um, uh, let me see, do we get a two fan gaming X? Oh, wait a few minutes. We will uh, talk about that. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe we might have something to show you. Very maybe. <laughs> uh, let me see. Is that, um, is that too much teasing? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the next VJ card. Uh, this is our uh, Seahawk. Uh, you also yeah. happen to have one? No, no. Oh. Um, I, I could only I thought you would smuggle surprise so us again. Many cards. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I could only smuggle so many cards out of the office. You couldn't um, carry no, more. I mean, <laughs> this one is. Uh, um, if you've seen our, our last uh, previous generations, I should say, yeah. the, so the 1080, 1080 Ti, uh, Seahawks, it, it's the same principle. Um, yeah. And it's a very successful card because uh, especially the GPU core gets cooled very well by the all-in-one cooler. And also it's the easiest way and probably the cheapest way to get water cooling on your VJ card. And yeah, I mean, you don't have to. Because you don't have to build the whole water loop. It's basically yeah. just a one piece thing. That's what we call it an all in one system. Yeah. So, you know, you can just install the, the radiator, make sure you have some space for your tubes, of course, but the tubes are already there. So you have no maintenance. It's just installing the graphics card and, and it's like adding a, a, an extra system fan, basically. Uh, you, you don't even connect this uh, radiator fan to your motherboard. It's already connected to the graphics card. I. So, uh... I have some questions. Uh, when do you expect RTX in your laptops? Uh, you know, at this moment, it, it's very difficult to say. We don't uh, know. No. Uh, well, we know. <laughs> uh, just, you know, it's a matter of time, uh, these kind of things. Uh, uh, laptops but... usually follow a few months after the the release. I mean, look at the previous generations. It yeah. will be some something similar, probably. Uh, I don't yeah. know the exact dates. Yeah, but, but still, we we don't know the specific date when this no, will come. No, no, no. We don't know any uh, anything official, you know. But you know, this is a, a matter of time, and then uh, normally it's uh, like we uh, can three, make a guess. That's three good. or four months. Uh, guess. <laughs> yeah. Just a few months probably. Yeah. So um, I mean, look then, at the like, look at the higher TDP of these cards. Do you really think that putting those in a laptop right now would be a good idea? Not at this moment. Uh, so uh, so then, I, think, uh, I think those we'll... guys have a, have a lot of challenge and work ahead of them to make sure that these cards get cooled properly. So let's give yeah, them some time. Last generation, they also uh, managed. Uh, does does yes. of, Do the ray tracing chips affect the non-ray tracing games? Uh, well, that's a very interesting question. You know, uh, we don't have all the technical details, but what I now can see from the uh, GPU, the Turing GPU, you know, it's a, the, they are separate uh, units. So it does not affect it. So uh, uh, the, the, the GPUs have more CUDA cores. They have GDR6 memory. So, you know, I, so I cannot... So they have other aspects that should improve performance. Yeah, they but should... it's not directly yes. the ray no. tracing part that improves performance in other games. No, well. indeed. So it should not impact. Uh, and all the way around, uh, when you use ray tracing, will it impact performance? 
we don't know yet, but you know, it's a, it's a hybrid technology. It's a new technology. Uh, so, and it's I also- a completely different way of rendering light. So, I yeah. mean, you know, this is the first time we do this technology. So, I mean, yeah. as with any new technologies, you shouldn't expect like, you know, the best, the, the, the zenith of performance right from the start. So it will probably need some, some work and it will improve you know, I, I also month, saw some even. game devs. Uh, I think those yeah. from uh, Tom Prader, they also said, you know, this is, you know, this is still the, the first uh, engineering versions of the software. You know, this will improve yep. over time. And I think Tom Prader, they will uh, release it after the launch in a patch. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but this is something what I thought I saw on, on their Twitter account. Yeah, they, um, they need to improve it. They need to optimize it, yeah. obviously. And I mean, from both sides. So NVIDIA probably can optimize it still along the way. And uh, as well, game developers can do that yeah. as well. It's a new technology. Yeah. Everybody needs to kind of play around with it and, and figure out what's the best and, it and looks yeah, awesome. the best way to apply it and to use it. Yeah, so uh, I have another question about the shipping schedule. What will ship first? Well, uh, at this moment, we're already shipping Duke and Gaming X Trio. Uh, so those will be, I think on most e-tailers, you also see these are available for pre-order. Yeah. Yes. Um, after that, we will have Ventus and we will have uh, this uh, Seahawk. Uh, and this is both for 2080 and 2080 Ti because as, uh, as Nvidia announced, 2070 will come in October. And uh, the 2080, 2080 Ti are, uh, are allowed to be, oh, let's say, are on shelf. On the 20th of September. So that's the Starting moment. Starting from the 20th. Yeah, yeah. that's the moment that the uh, e-tailers and the retailers can uh, start shipping them. Uh, or you can pick them up over there. Uh, but yeah, there is a pre-order going on. Um, yeah, you know, you need to decide yourself. Like what I said, benchmarks, you know, you can wait for it. Uh, but And then stock is getting better uh, each week. Yeah. You know, there is more output. So it's a matter of time. Um, even remember, you know, the, the, if you look back at the 10 series when they were introduced and, and you compare benchmarks of the 1080 back then and benchmarks right now, there will probably be quite a bit of significant difference in the performance. So yeah, now, yeah. because drivers have been way more optimized yeah. for, for the Pascal series, it will probably perform a lot better than it did at the start. And I think the same thing and maybe even more will be true for, for this card. Uh, you can expect, I think, a lot of improvement in the coming year or years. Um, and also, especially the, the AI core, I was watching the presentation by Jensen and he was also saying, you know, because this AI can really help to fill in gaps that don't need to be calculated by the processor, by the GPU. Yeah. So who knows, maybe this can really help to, to accelerate the performance in normal games as well. We have no idea. If, uh, it if seems a, that there's a lot of possibilities If there. AI can help me aim in PUBG, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm not quite sure it will help you to do that. That's called okay. cheating. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's called cheating. So guys, uh, there you have it's it. Called uh, assist, yeah. This is the... Uh, I believe console players have it. <laughs> yeah, this is the complete uh, lineup uh, of our... Uh, not not the complete, you know, the, the lineup what we now announced for 2080 uh, and 2080 Ti. Uh, I see a lot of questions asking about armor, lightning, uh, gaming X, you know, uh, this is all, um, you know, a guess for the future, uh, I would say. Um, but yeah, we're, I mean, Peter, you still have some work to do, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, first finish these guys. I've, I've been here for, for a few weeks now already. And uh, it's been it's been a lot of work already it's been a lot of fun as well because you know such such a lot of information and so exciting to to work and look at the new products and actually be able to you know have some sort of an impact and a say in them uh that's really cool yeah uh, that's why this this is still one of my dream jobs you know so Me i'm too. really happy to do that yeah i know you like playing games here and on the live stream so uh yeah, that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, so the products themselves, really awesome. I also can't wait to see what they, uh, what the performance will be like. Uh, yeah. um, I know the prices are a bit higher, but you know, who knows? Perhaps it'll be well worth it. So it we'll all depends on the benchmarks. Yeah. So uh, let me uh, do a quick recap before I will show something new. Uh, so uh, Arrow is our exhaust fan. Uh, Ventus is our uh, dual fan, and, and these both will be on uh, around the MSRP pricing because we talked about pricing earlier. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, this is the Ventus uh, uh, cooler. Uh, what well, Peter shows, you know, he's now in Taiwan, so they're all mock-up designs. Um, maybe you can go back. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so then we have uh, the the Duke. Uh, Duke is our three fan. 
uh, armor. Uh, some people ask, for, so that, you know, it's easy to remember. Duke will also be available worldwide and is already shipping. Um, yeah. Thank you, Peter. Duke, three fans of Torx 2.0. Yeah, and then we have, uh, of course, the oh yeah, the backside of Duke, of course. Really impressive card. Yeah, I and, have to say. And Duke is reference PCB, and then we have uh, the uh, Gaming X Trio, uh, which is uh, uh, based on the MSI Gaming PCB with more phases. Uh, actually. Maybe Peter, you can show uh, how many power connectors this one uses because I saw some people saying it's two times eight, but I think they're wrong, yeah. right? Yes. No, 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 no. On this one, actually, it is two times okay. eight. Okay. So this you is uh, twenty-eight. The Duke. Yeah, the Duke actually uses, and this is two twenty-eighty. Yeah. The Duke actually uses one eight-pin and one six-pin, but again, this is twenty-eighty. I can already tell you that on the twenty-eighty Ti, the uh, Gaming X Trio uses two eight-pins. And the six pin. Yes. So a lot of available juicy power. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So, uh, and then we have uh, the EK water cooling uh, of the EK. Uh, the. Ooh. Ah, everybody knows. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> did you just. Did you just leak something no no no, no one I, think, heard I, I think everybody knows this we, is coming. we will beat that out uh, uh we so. should we should stop the stream uh, with this anyway <laughs> i'm Maybe, telling yeah. too much there, there might be a green screen incoming you know yeah, know yeah yeah anyway this is a uh, <laughs> the, 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 the seahawk we're going to have and then uh, something uh, new i want to show to everybody and and this is also just uh, still a mock-up design and peter could not take it from the office this is our new oh, twin frozer 7 uh, cooling uh, gaming yeah. X and uh, yeah you will see this later on uh, so this is twin frozer so that one is set to replace this card yes the twin frozer 6 yes um, and this will be for later you know this is just a 3d render uh, but yeah I already saw the the, the physical heatsink and it really looks awesome right yes yeah shroud the heatsink um, it, the shapes are kind of like it reminds you a little bit of the the twin frozers of last years but it's yeah. very different as well so yeah. I, i'm really i really like how it looks you can see that I, the, the led I you see know more it's a rgb a little bit of a different way yeah it's more rgb a little bit different way as well and it's uh i can already tell you it's a little bit like indirect RGB. i think this so we, this we, photo doesn't do it justice i mean the no, real one no looks... definitely not no. Yeah. that's always and it's the real cards photo. always look better so, than render yeah. and i think this yeah, is also yeah. a challenge um, maybe you can talk a little bit about it what we have you know because nvidia launches these we we have all the renders uh people are getting really excited in chat <laughs> <laughs> no red well it has rgb led so you can put red on Dual um, fan gaming is still alive. Yeah, ah, there's yes. my gaming X. <laughs> yeah, so, yep. um, uh, you know, when we, you know, we have the three 3D renders. Uh, we also uh, have uh, 3D printed models. You know, that is just a mock-up how the the physical uh, shape looks. I think we showed one two or three years ago on on. Uh, oh, maybe yeah. I think uh, three or four years ago on Computex we showed. Uh, um, um, a yellow one uh, printed, uh, 3D printed one, you know, that's just to give the uh, shape a feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and then, you know, we get the physical pass, we can screw them together, we can see how it yep. looks. And then, you know, it's always a discussion. Do you want this color or this color? I remember two years ago, Peter, we were talking about RGB LED, right? For this model, how, what the intensity, I think it took us half a day to discuss the intensity of the RGB LEDs on this one. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of work that goes in there. It's not just, you know, slap a few random LEDs in there and there you go. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's there's the, 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 the uh, little processor or MCU, as we call it, that needs to uh, control the RGB yeah. and uh, how many LEDs actually you put in there. So you can put one so that if it changes color, the whole card changes color, or you can put a lot of them and individually you can control the colors. But as you can imagine, that's more expensive, so you can but separate it's also the way more zones. fancy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so there's a lot of, and even like you say, Eric, exactly the intensity. So how how bright should they be uh, at the start? Um, should you be able to control the brightness? Is that something that's you know? So it it goes, uh, yeah, into a lot of detail in the end. Yeah, and and I, you know, people are saying, uh, will it have red? You know, and I think this is quite interesting because this is what we discussed. You know, shoot, you yeah. know. When we make a picture uh, uh, from the color box or for, on the product page, should we make it with RGB LED, so red, green, blue, and like all the color, the, the millions color effects, or should we also have a red one? And how will it boot from out of the box? You know, because should it be red? Here's the or? thing: last generation, uh, um, of course, we got a lot of 
criticism. I mean, we, we chose to, to keep the red in there because that's yeah. what you guys knew and trusted from the Twin Frozen 5. So it was, a, it was a conscious choice. But there was a point where they said, you know, combining RGB with a, a strong color like red is kind of contradictory a little bit because that, that yeah. gi doesn't give you a lot of freedom uh, when it comes to selecting colors because at some point it just doesn't look right. And I mean, that's a good point. So we tried to find a balance with the lightning. We, we found the perfect balance because we didn't use any uh, uh, strong color there. So it was completely neutral. Uh, with the Gaming X Trio, there was still a little bit of red in there at, at the front. Um, and with these cards, as you can see at the moment, well, there is actually no red there. But we can also imagine, I personally, I really like the red. But that's just because I, for example, like it. But I can imagine that a lot of people don't like it as well. So now we've gone for a non-red look. Yeah. Um, let us know if you really like the red, for example. Um, I already see some mixed opinions. Some, some people really like the red. Some really like the neutral for the RGB. Yeah. That's yeah. Really there's always, always the, the yeah. challenge what we have, you know, to make these yeah. kind of decisions. But that's also why we like the input, you know. We want to hear everybody's opinion. And also, if you have yeah. some crazy ID for... Uh, will <laughs> Some crazy ID. Just a question. Will 650 watt be enough for the gaming X3O? Uh, and also yeah. depends on the rest of the your system. Itself, yes. Yeah, but for sure. If you're you know. talking about the whole system, you might have to do some calculations. Well, yeah, it, it depends on what kind of CPU. You know, if you're going to yeah. have a, a 32 core or a 16 core, whatever, 18 core, I don't know. I think maybe he's also referring to on the website, on the specs. Currently, it says the recommended PSU for the 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio is 650 watts. Yeah. Um, but again, it depends on the rest of your system a little bit. And, and this it also is with... okay. Yeah. But, you know... It also, um, we, we, we always think with overclocking in mind, right? Yes. And uh, if you have an extremely powerful CPU, for yeah. example... No, normally, if you buy this kind of VGA card, you also have a, a like a, a Core i5 or Core i7, you know, or a Ryzen with yeah. 8 cores, you know, it's... it's a, uh, but, I mean, you guys do the math, right? You yeah. saw the TDPs as well. Uh, the, the 2080 Ti is supposed to be around 250, 260 watts. So, uh, that leaves, if you have a 650 watt, depending on how good your power but supply that's is. That's non overclocked. You need to make sure. Yeah, I mean, so, so then you have like, I don't know, 400 watts, say 300, just to be sure. You know, 300 watts left for the rest of your PC. Yeah. And that seems like quite a lot. You know, you did a stream last week with the, yeah. the X399 uh, with the, the 32 core Threadripper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's extreme, right? But I, that, that I, I used like the 250 I used the 1200 itself. watt power supply also to do overclocking. Yeah, so there you go. So yeah. if you have like a normal, uh, like last generation or this generation, i5 or i7, probably if you're not overclocking it heavily, you should be. You should be fine. Yeah. So I see a lot of comments about this uh, um, uh, about this uh, render. I'm, I'm going to call 3D render. People, yeah. just, please, you know, the, the real card looks even better. And, and I'm sure in the coming period, you know, I'm not going to say days or weeks, uh, but in the coming period, we will release the, the, the real look and feel. And uh, then you will see and it, more you know, angles as well. More angles indeed. Yeah. This is just to give you an impression what, what kind of direction we're working on. Just the first sneak peek of the card. Yeah, indeed. Exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, we are still working on a lot of other cards. I, by accident, I already mentioned one. <clears throat> uh, no one heard that. <laughs> I need to no check with my boss up. if I will. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, so um, I think, Peter, uh, what is the time? At your side, well, it's, uh, Taiwan? It's quickly nearing midnight here, so... Yeah. Um, Okay, if you want to stick around, we can count down, but uh, <laughs> I imagine you've got better things to do. Do you have fireworks prepared? <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> okay, no fireworks, no countdown needed. Uh, fireworks. Yeah, so uh, uh, thanks for uh, showing. Maybe you can still uh, show all the cars because I see some new people uh, joining. Maybe just... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I can quickly... Yeah, just, them all from, one. Yeah. Yeah, just very See. quickly. I mean, they yeah. we're soon finished and then they can uh, uh, restart yeah. the live stream again. Well, it's not live anymore exactly. then. This is Vantage, or two uh, fan. Uh, Ventus. Ventus, yes. yeah, indeed. Uh, Two-way so. fan. Uh, then we have uh, the uh, three-way fan. Yeah, nice backplate also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really like it. Calm this. down, Eric. Calm down. Are you in a rush or something? Do you you late for a date? Or? Oh no, we can. You you know me. We can go on for hours here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm afraid you, I, you, should, you should go to bed. <laughs> I'm afraid I talk yeah, too much no, NDA. I still got work. Keep me talking. <laughs> still got work to do. And he accidentally releases five more cards or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, means, that means that I have to do more work tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oké, okay, so this is our um, Duke. Ja. Yeah. So as you see, also quite really quite big. big car. Yeah. The back end is nice and closed. Reference PCB. And then uh, finally, yeah, this is the Duke still. <laughs> I think everybody can see that. And finally, we have uh, our uh, Gaming X Trio for the 2018 and the 2018. The beast itself. Yeah. So and you can also, re you know, this, this car has a lot of resembles with our Twin Thruster 7 uh, cooling with uh, two fans uh, on Gaming X, uh, which we previewed. I got a question. Can you show them on top of each other? I think they want to compare the length of the cards. I will so maybe try, it's but interesting these are really to see. heavy and I don't want to damage them. So I'm, I'm going to try and also you I have should to be, say I'm not allowed to. <laughs> more so you can actually see it. So, um, or okay, maybe ta go. take them next to each other and just two on top yeah, of each yeah, other yeah. so you can compare the length of the cards. Yeah, so first what I'll do is I'll do Gaming X Trio and Duke because those two are, um, for all intents and purposes, the two don't, free fans. Don't do a Linus. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to, but it's... Uh, so as you can see, actually, uh, Duke is uh, not as long. I, yeah, I can't really get it. I can put them on top of each other like this. So the Gaming X is actually a little bit longer, the Gaming X Trio. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I should put them okay, in the right way. A little bit closer to you. So, a little bit closer to me. Yeah, 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 thanks. So the Gaming X is just a little bit longer, but the Duke is actually less uh, high if you look at it this way. So it's. A little bit more slender because of the PCB. And that's also why the the trio has two bigger fans, right? Because of the higher PCB. Yes. Yeah. Well, it has two bigger fans indeed because uh, the, all the fans on the Duke are uh, nine centimeters, like mm -hmm. the, the one on, on the where my pinky is yeah. moving on the bracket side of the Gaming X Trio. So the Gaming X Trio has two 10 centimeter cards and one uh, nine centimeter as well. Yeah. So that's the comparison between those two. Yeah, I see already some, uh, again, some people asking why we have one, cent one nine centimeter fan and uh, two 10 centimeter fans. This is because of the SLI bridge. If you- Yeah, uh, so I can show you again. You can actually yeah. take this part off with the screw holes you see here. And then you can actually on the back, there is the, new what we call MV link or SLI. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not quite sure yet. I think it's going to, still going to be called SLI, the technology. Can you, can you now take the Ventus and the, um, you want, to, game... you want to compare it with the with the trio? Yeah, or yeah, the yeah. Trio, trio, trio. With the trio. I see you already smiling. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the biggest difference. So yeah. let me see how I can do this without breaking them. I uh, think you have tomorrow. You have to explain something to the engineer. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I'll have some explaining to do. Can you keep them up a bit? Okay. So this is a lot bigger difference. Yes. So here you go. And these are both uh, 2080. 2080, okay. No 2080 Ti. Yeah. yeah. Okay, clear. So that's uh, quite yeah. a big of a bit of okay, a difference. Okay, I thought when you, when you were holding the Ventus, I thought it already looked quite big. But now when you're holding that gaming trio next to it. <laughs> that's, that's why I was laughing already. Yeah. Like, okay, this is going to be the biggest difference. Interesting comparison, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think, you know, I still see a lot of questions and please everybody keep in mind, uh, these are engineering samples, uh, mock-up designs, uh, some are handmade, yes. you know, they're not final at all. Okay, um, now it looks impressive again, just, yeah, just yeah, on its own. <laughs> so um, uh, I think, Peter, uh, you're coming back, uh, next week you're back, uh, so yes. maybe um, maybe in a few weeks' time we need to do another live stream from here and then with all the cars we yes. make sure we have them on hand and then we also need to make sure we can show something new again. Um, we go a little bit more in depth, maybe. Yeah. Uh, performance, uh, perhaps, and maybe we we'll can well, show we some to, benchmarks. Well, yeah, exactly. When the performance is uh, uh, allowed to show, so maybe then we can also talk yeah. about that. Maybe yeah. we can even do some some overclocking if you want. Obviously, there's going to be a new afterburner version available at some cool. point that supports the new cards. Yeah. Um, I, I also heard that there's actually going to be a few new features in there, but okay. I, I can't tell you what yet. So yeah. make sure you, uh, if you're into the overclocking, uh, you follow the news on that. Um, so yeah, let us know also what you'd like to see about these new cards, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, so we can maybe see in, in the coming weeks what we can actually do uh, yeah, when it, we get the cards Yeah. So in, guys, in um, our local office as well. 
Yeah, thanks Peter. Thanks for uh, staying awake this late and uh, enjoy your uh, working day in, uh, in, I think, eight hours you're starting again, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so it's uh, sleep, get up and uh, get back to work. Yeah, enjoy your breakfast. Have a good night. Thanks for joining and thanks, <laughs> thanks. for stealing all those awesome samples. I hope you bring some <laughs> back for us. I hope I don't get fired, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, next week, uh, next week, uh, I think, uh, Michiel, yeah, we're going to call you Mike in English, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to do a live stream about uh, a really our B450 one. Mini ITX, and you're going to build a really nice PC. Right. Uh, it's such a cute small PC. Yeah, and it's going to be really powerful. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, going uh, to be it's really uh, with a, I'm really looking forward to with it. a nice uh, in-win case. Yeah, it looks it, really awesome. RGB LED there. So we're going to build a streaming PC. He is actually. Uh, I last week I uh, built some uh, 32 core uh, system. He's going to build nice mini ITX uh, where you can stream and game on at the same time. So yeah. please remember each week. Wednesdays, um, let me check, uh, 4 o'clock CET, uh, 10 o'clock in the evening uh, in uh, APEC, um, in the morning in USA. Uh, you can uh, find us on YouTube and on uh, Facebook, also on Mixer and Twitch. Uh, so make sure to join next week. And yeah, I see, still see a lot of questions about GT, of <laughs> RTX, you know. Uh, you know, in a few weeks, like what we said, in a few weeks or when we can show you more, you know, we will do another live stream uh, uh, with a lot of uh, new cards over here. Uh, we will do some benchmarks, you know. So, uh, yeah, keep uh, uh, keep checking our Facebook page and uh, take care. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for watching. See you Thanks. next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Ja, zie je uit.